I think the problem here is that um, the government have been dragging their feet for quite a long time on this one. Um, Theresa May initially said this was going to happen back in July 2018. So obviously here we are over three years later. And I obviously, my heart goes out to Sinead, but um, at the end of the day, we, we run the risk of throwing the baby out with the bathwater on this one because um, the majority of this bill is to do with, I mean, for example, the consultation was to do with religious groups, etc. And we were worried about like, um, if people wanted to pray the gay away, etc. I don't, I think there is a danger of conflating um, gender dysphoria with um, gay conversion therapy because I don't think they're the same thing. And and as Sinead said, I don't I don't think if, if somebody is going through gender dysphoria, they should be able to have counselling and to discuss it. And I and I don't think obviously they should be, you know, taken straight away at their word and like, oh we'll just go ahead with hormones. And I don't think that is really the case most of the time either. But, I mean, let's go back to you talking about <clears throat> uh, the gay conversion therapy here, which you say the majority of this legislation deals with. Mm. We actually ban in this country already physical or medical gay conversion therapy. Um, so, essentially, you think it's fine that the government says to those people who might be religiously devout and believe, fundamentally believe inside themselves, that they want to have, say, a religious or spiritual intervention to help them come to terms or change their sexuality, that that must mm -hmm. be banned as well? Yes, absolutely. And I think that that includes, um, like Jane Ozan, who was in the um, in the group, the think tank initially with the government, who left it last year. She says that people over 18, even still, um, they shouldn't be able to give consent because, I mean, being, you know, following religious doctrine is, you know, is a mental condition in itself half the time. So I don't, I absolutely don't agree that um, even if somebody is religious, they can go to their pastor because there is no doubt that they will be trying to be convinced to pray the gay when it is, and they are in the wrong and they, and their feelings are wrong. And that in itself, obviously, is highly damaging for somebody's mental health. You've made a couple of generalizations here because, first of all, you talked about <clears throat> when we're talking about the um, uh, body dysphoria, you said, well, you know, most people aren't hurried down a path of um, being, uh, you know, encouraged to have hormonal treatments or go under the knife. And then you're equally saying, well, most people who might speak to their pastor about it will be told to pray away the gay. But the fact here, we're talking about beliefs in general, aren't we? Someone who believes that divine intervention or the intervention of their religious leader will be of benefit and somebody who believes mm. they're born in the wrong body. So why is one permissible and one has to be uh, criminalised? Well, because with the case of praying the gay away, for example, um, we know which way it is going. And religion has been um, obviously at the very centre of some of the worst conversion therapy businesses in the whole world. I mean, we, I mean, obviously we're talking about this country, but you only need to look elsewhere overseas. And it, religion is, you know, at the heart of the most diabolical things that people do to homosexual people. So I don't, there is, religion has no party in this situation at all. As far as um, gender dysphoria goes, then, then yes, I do believe that people should be able to speak about it. And and also, like, I, the trans people that I know and are friends with go through years and years and years of therapy before anything happens to them that, they, that, that is irreversible. Years. It might do that now, but the point is this legislation might actually prevent that. And then can you see that it creates a big problem if all of a sudden trained psychotherapists or trained psychologists or counsellors are in fear yeah. of eventually finding, saying to people, you know, giving them talking therapies with the end goal of making them comfortable with their yeah. natal sex, that if they suddenly think, well, I could be found liable of criminal activity by essentially if someone says they're a man, converting them back to the, the female body they're born into, is this not actually going to be a major disservice to all of those people out there who are going through the very mm. complex process of questioning their gender? No, I agree. And having not seen the legislation myself, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't necessarily comment on, you know, on scaremongering, saying that, oh, if I say that, I might be, you know, put up in the clink, etc. I believe in our justice system. And I believe that, you know, if cases were brought to the courts and, you know, when someone had been in the wrong, then yes, of course, they deserve you know, to, to pay the punishment. But at the end of the day, this is this this whole bill is to do with protecting people and all all across the board. So, you know, I don't see why anyone would have a problem with that.